So today we'll be testing Intel Optane, more specifically Optane H10. Now, Dimitri did a video, an explain video a few weeks ago, explaining the technology behind uh, Intel's latest M10 and H10 memory. And to, to give you a little bit of context, it's basically, you know, the combination of uh, the responsiveness of Optane as well as that paired with a QLC NAND flash, all put into this single M.2 module, which is actually pretty sweet. Now, if you're interested in learning more about it, I'll actually recommend checking Dimitri's video or explain video right over here. But uh, basically, Intel sent us, uh, you know, a notebook to test out uh, the performance that you can actually get out of something like this compared to a traditional NVMe based drive. So why don't we get into that? But first, a quick message from our sponsor. The new Razer Blade 15 is a machine for people who know exactly what they want. When you need a reliable keyboard and want custom lighting. When you need an accurate display and want insanely fast 144Hz refresh rate. When you need a portable machine and want a gorgeous, thin aluminum unibody in the world's smallest 15.6 inch gaming laptop. When you need powerful gaming hardware to truly dominate with GeForce RTX. The Razer Blade 15, when you need the power for anything you do and want nothing to hold you back. Check out the configuration you want down below. Okay, so let's quickly go over the notebook that Intel sent us for testing purposes. So this is an HP Spectre X360 featuring a Whiskey Lake Core i7-8565U processor. It also has 16 gigabytes of RAM and the start of the show is of course, uh, Intel's Optane Memory H10. Now, uh, for comparison, Intel also sampled as an Intel 760p SSD and uh, the capacity on that thing is around 512 gigabytes. This is a 32 gigabyte Optane memory module with 512 gigabytes of NAND flash. So storage or capacity wise, we are gonna be doing pretty much, you know, an apples to apples comparison, except this time we have, you know, Optane plus some SSD storage in a single M.2 form factor. Now I wanted to show you guys a more realistic use case scenario with Optane H10. And in order to do that, I transferred some of my personal project files and some applications to both of these drives. And after running, you know, all these tests for like multiple times, I noticed, I mean, the difference is actually really, really interesting. So kicking things off with a boot test, as you can see, the H10 actually takes about 10 seconds to get into Windows, whereas the 760p takes around 18 seconds to get to the desktop. Moving on to Crystal Dismark, and this is where the Optane H10 takes a step back. As you can see, the read speeds are obviously a lot better on the 760p compared to the H10, and that's because from my conversations with Intel, they did mention that the, um, the, the, NAND, the NAND flash on the H10 modules are actually based off the 660p. So that is probably one of the reasons why we're getting, uh, you know, relatively lower read performance compared to the 760p, which is actually fairly new to the market. Now, if you did catch Dimitri's explain video, he did mention that uh, the Optane memory module and the NAND flash are actually split in two by two. So two lanes are dedicated towards Optane and then two lanes are towards the NAND flash itself. And I think that is something to keep note of because I ended up disabling Optane on the um, uh, H10 because you can do that through the RSD driver. And I ran the Crystal Dismar benchmark. And as you can see, the read and write performance are almost split by half, which almost makes sense because you are only getting two lanes on the SSD flash or the SSD uh, compared to Optane. So they both sort of talk to each other when it comes to caching certain applications. And that's what kind of gives you a more responsive system. So as I'm going through uh, the rest of the benchmarks, you'll see why uh, Optane and something like this will be beneficial for some users out there. I also ran a few game launches on both these SSDs. Uh, starting with Dota 2, the Optane H10 took roughly seven and a half seconds to get to the start compared to roughly 10 seconds on the 760p. The same story goes with Doom. The Optane H10 took roughly 25 seconds to get to the machine compared to 29 seconds or so on the 760p. Moving on to Photoshop, I took this thumbnail project that I worked on recently and I launched that with the application and the H10 took roughly four seconds to get to that compared to uh, roughly seven seconds on the 760p. Now, from what I can tell, there isn't a significant difference between the two drives. I mean, just launching a project file from the start I mean, sure, the H10 is a little bit faster, but it's not that much faster to a point that it just it just gives you that wow factor. So I decided to run a few other tests to sort of uh, you know flex the muscles on the H10, and this is what I did. So I took this 18 gigabyte video file and I duplicated it within a folder, and I decided to launch a GIMP project file, which is around 100 megabytes, and this 
definitely shows the true potential of where H10 can come in beneficial. Now, as you can see, the H10 took roughly 10 seconds to open the project compared to a whopping 40 seconds on the 760p. And remember, this is with a file duplicate, a video duplicate within the same folder uh, while opening a project uh, when it's loading up the whole thing. And, uh, you know, I made sure to run another test to see if I'm actually, if I'm getting consistent results. And I sure was because I took the exact same background scenario and I opened up Photoshop and the H10 took around nine seconds to open the project compared to a little over 30 seconds on the 760p. Now the shirt does need an explanation. What essentially is happening is when I was performing the task on the 760p, that drive is actually fighting for resources. It's fighting for bandwidth to complete its tasks. So it's not only duplicating a file, but at the same time, it's trying to open up a project at the same time. So it's basically maxing out the drive's capacity. Compared to something like the uh, H10, you have two separate modules. So you have the opt-in memory that's actually caching the application to open the project as fast as it can. And then you also have uh, the QLC NAND flash to um, you know, do its right uh, performance, which is basically duplicating the video file. So it's actually doing its own thing. You know, It's sharing the bandwidth in a very smart way so that it actually opens the project really faster compared to uh, the 760p because uh, while the write performance on the H10 was a lot slower compared to the 760p, uh, it actually manages to open the projects in both scenarios. So having looked at the numbers back to back, I think the one conclusion that I can come up with is that Optane H10 is really geared towards the prosumer market. Because if you're someone who really needs access to a lot of assets, like data assets, in a shorter amount of time, H10 would be a lot beneficial because you know if you're rendering something in the background or if you're if you're you know performing multiple background activities while opening up certain projects, Optane will certainly be a lot beneficial because you have Intel Optane paired with QLC NAND that sort of talk to each other. So I want to say that it's more of a smarter SSD compared to what you can buy in the market right now. Because if you look at the 760p, it is a fast SSD. Don't get me wrong. The sequential read and write performance definitely tops the charts compared to the H10. But, you know, when it comes to performing a lot of tasks at the same time, it struggles to share the bandwidth. And I think that's where the 760p has its limitation and something like the H10 kind of takes over in that case. Now, as a content creator, I do see myself taking advantage of Intel's Optane H10 because it sure does accelerate project loadups or application loadups in the first place. But for gamers, I really don't think you would actually benefit a lot from something like this because, um, you know, as you saw with Dota 2 and of course Doom, just loading up a mission, you're not going to notice a huge difference uh, to something like a traditional NVMe based drive. Oh, and another thing, you really can't buy this separately online because Intel's really targeting this to uh, no manufacturers and they really want the, them to sort of implement H10 into their products uh, because, you know, it's more of a space saving storage unit that helps accelerate programs uh, rather than you know giving you the best performance. It's really, again, like I said, it's really geared towards a certain type of demographic. But the other thing that really concerns me the most is pricing because I have no information regarding that, uh, at least from the briefing that I had with Intel regarding uh, Optane H10. So, you know, definitely expect it to be a little bit more expensive compared to a traditional, traditional NVMe SSD. But of course, it does come with its drawbacks and of course its pros as well. So let me know what you guys think about Optane H10. And of course, having looked at the performance numbers or having looked at the numbers in general, are you impressed? Uh, would you actually consider a notebook with Optane H10? Uh, and would you like to see something like this hit the desktop platform? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm Ebro with Hybrid Connects. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure to check out some relevant content over here. I'm signing off and I'll see you guys in the next one.